In this video, we're going to briefly introduce some of the topics in web browser forensics. Um, this video is part of a module called Basic Analysis of Web Browsing Activity, which is part of, um, which was created for the Cypher Initiative. Cypher is an initiative to introduce computer forensics topics to high school students. Uh, more information on Cypher, along with this module and a whole bunch of other modules, can be found at Cypher, C Y F O R dot ISIS, I S I S dot poly dot edu, Cypher dot ISIS dot poly dot edu. Um, but what we're going to discuss here is, for example, if you're, you know, you're in a forensics investigation, um, one of the best places you may look for evidence um, could be in a user's web browsing activity. For example, if a suspect, um, you know, often or has browsed to a certain website or he's downloaded certain programs or files, you know, it may help build a case against them or it may help in an investigation just to see what he was doing online, um, what, what sites he was on, what kind of files he was downloading, etc. So you know obviously what we can do is if we're using a computer you know if we for example go to a website um, let's just go to Wikipedia here and we'll just search for computer forensics so obviously you know we viewed this page right here so the first thing to realize obviously is that you can go and view your history in your browser and you can see that we went to computer forensics on Wikipedia. Um, but a better question is where is this actually stored? Where is your history actually maintained in your computer? So the first thing to note is that every browser actually stores your history somewhere else and in their own format generally. Um, so if you're using Firefox, your web history will store it in one place. If you're using Chrome, it will be stored somewhere else, etc. But for example with Firefox, and the actual full path to this is in the slides, um, but you can go ahead and actually locate the file containing your web history. Probably just open this beforehand. Um, but in this folder that we just browsed to, and it's a file called. Right here. Places.sqlite. Um, SQLite. Is a, it's a database file, um, so it would be best viewed with a program that will you know, open this well. We're just going to look at it quickly with a text editor. We don't really need to do much with it. But just to see that if you open this file up right here, um, you can see that we browsed to, we did a search on Wikipedia for computer forensics. So clearly you can see that your history is being maintained somewhere in this file, for example, with Firefox. Um, so, you know, on an investigation, you could theoretically go and find this file and open it and go through it, you know, hopefully with a better, with a different program that actually, you know, it's just a little prettier. Um, but you can see that it is maintained over here. But again, every browser, you know, does it differently. Every browser uh, stores it somewhere else. So, on an investigation, what you may want to do is there's a program here that we can just demonstrate with a split that's, you know, there's others as well. But to look at, you know, the, browse, the browsing history for your entire computer, um, this will actually pull... Um, your browsing history for all these browsers um, and you know you can run it against different profile or whatever so you don't have to run against your machine but if we look at you know just the history from the last hour um, we can basically see that you know on Firefox I've actually done this a couple times now preparing this but you can see that we went and looked up Wikipedia um, Wikipedia's forensics computer forensics page um, you can see it all coming up over here. You can also see that this will, this program, for example, will actually tell you which browser you were using at the time. You see a couple entries here for Chrome. Um, there should be some probably other entries here for, for that are Internet Explorer. You can also see the profile. This is the user. My username here is Forensics. The user that was on these sites, etc. So it's a good, if you want like a timeline of activity, you can see, you know, what the user was doing on the machine. Um, one of the other things I want to just mention here that you can do as well is in addition to maintaining a history of the files you looked at, um, your browser will also maintain a cache of you know previously viewed pages. So for example, if you go to a page and then you want to reload it a few minutes later, uh, instead of having to re-download the page, um, your browser can maintain a file in your machine or a set of files which contains that, that file, um, that previously downloaded file so that it doesn't have to re-download it it can just pull it up from there so it's faster and more efficient. Um, so I can show you, I guess, 
on here that for Firefox, for example, um, the cache is actually located here. Um, It's a little more difficult to see because it's, you know it's just kind of split up differently. So in each of these, you may not find what you're looking for. Um, so we're not actually going to open any of these or anything like that. But just to demonstrate how this works, let's exit this. But if you look at this page here quickly, just so we have an example, of what was on here? Uh, it's basically just some stuff about forensics. You see a picture here of a white right blocker, etc. Um, what we can do actually is we can look at the cache with a different with a tool here that actually you know reads um, the web cache a little better, understands the format. Uh, these tools, by the way, if you want to know more about them or similar tools, you can look at the slides again. Um, it's in there. But what this does is goes and looks up the web cache to see what data you know what files were saved by your machine, um, what files were saved by your machine um, or by your web browser when you were look when you were on these sites. So, for example, we can look at. Let's see. I've gone ahead and you know it stores a whole bunch of files, but I've limited it to image files um, and the HTML files, so we can you know sort of get through this a little faster. Um, but just to show you a couple of examples, here I actually mentioned this a minute ago. We can go ahead and here's the file that's maintained image, and if we open it, um, you can see it's the right blocker. I think I mentioned that as we scroll down through the page. So that's an image saved by your computer, so that next saved by your browser, so that next time you browse to that page, for example, it doesn't have to go and re-download it. Um, I do suggest when you open these things, you open them this way instead of opening the link in the web browser. Here, it's not a big deal, but if you're on an investigation or whatever, you don't want to browse to every site that uh, um, somebody was on. In fact, before we view the next one, I'm going to actually just go and disable my web connection, just because that way. Um, it also won't pull down further information, so we'll actually see the exact of the file as it's maintained by our computer. By um, and we can look quickly here. I'm just looking for here is um, here. Here's a good one. This is the actual page we just viewed, the computer forensics page on Wikipedia, and we can open it up and it'll open with Chrome, I think, because that's my primary default browser here. But again, I am working offline here. I did disable my network connection, so you can see this is actually going to be the file as it's maintained on your computer. Um, without do downloading any additional information, but you can see um, that you know it's a pretty decent representation of the page that we were viewing before. Obviously, it's missing some stuff, but um, but again, that's all stored locally on your machine. So what you can see here is that looking through the web cache, looking through the internet history, it's a, is a good way to you know find information about a user's activity on your machine or a user's activity um, on a machine for an investigation to help uh, you know, possibly incriminate them or anything like that. Um, just before we go, we should mention there's way more information you can obtain from a web browser. You know, you can look for um, file downloads, maybe user's favorites, bookmarks, those kinds of things. Um, those again are also things that are stored locally by your web browser on the machine. Um, and you just have to you know, know where to look for them or how to open them. So I hope this was uh, interesting. I hope you gained something and thanks for listening.